Hello everyone, today we will learn by the application of the dimensions that how we can develop the mathematical relationship among different physical quantities. Here let us suppose a particle of mass m is moving in a circle with uniform velocity v. Let O is the center of the circle. You know that these force acting on the particle m will be directed towards the point O. So it is called as the centripetal force. Now you also know that the centripetal force here may depend upon the mass of the particle, its distance from the center of the circle and its velocity. So we will write here the possibilities that how the centripetal force will depend upon the other physical quantities. So here F is directly proportional to M, R and V. Now we can write here, let us say that F is directly proportional to M to the power A or we can say here that M will be involved, let us say A times in this formula. R will be involved B times in this formula and velocity will be involved C times in this formula. So we can write it as F is equal to K, M to the power A, R to the power B, V to the power C. Let us say K is a constant and it is equal to 1. Now we will write the dimensional formula of the both sides. You know that F is a force, so it will have the dimensional formula m l to the power minus 2. K is a constant, so it will be considered as 1. We will not write here 1. M is mass, so it will be represented by capital M in a square bracket. And it is A times, so power will be here. R is here distance, so it will be represented by L to the power B. And V is here velocity, it will be displacement upon time. Displacement is length, so it will be L and T to the power minus 1, and it is C times, so L T to the power minus 1 C. Now we can write it as M to the power A, here L to the power B, and here we will have L to the power C, so we will write L to the power B plus C. Here we will have t to the power minus c. Now on the left side we have the dimensional formula m to the power 1, l to the power 1, t to the power minus 2 and on the right side we have the dimensional formula m to the power a, l to the power b plus c, t to the power minus c. Now we will compare the powers of both the sides. When we compare the powers of both the sides we have a is equal to 1 then b plus c is equal to also 1 and here if you see t to the power minus 2 on left side here t to the power minus c so here minus 2 is equal to minus c so we will have here c is equal to 2 now from this equation we can find the value of b now it will be b plus 2 is equal to 1, so b will be equal to minus 1. And we have already find a is equal to 1. So now we have the value of a, b and c. Here a is equal to 1, b is equal to minus 1 and c is equal to 2. So all these values will we'll put in equation number 1. So our formula for the centripetal force becomes F is equal to K M to the power 1 V to the power 2 divided by R. If K is considered a constant and it is equal to 1, then centripetal force will be equal to M B square upon R. So here we can see that we can develop a mathematical relationship between the physical quantities force mass, velocity and distance by the application of the dimensions. Now the second problem is that for a simple pendulum, 
we, we will here find the time period of the bob for one oscillation. Now let us consider here it is a simple pendulum and let us say it is a bob of mass m and applied some force in the right direction. Let us say it moves from uh, A to B and then from B to A and then it comes from A to C and then C to A. So it continuously oscillate about its equilibrium point A. Now you also know that the kinetic energy at the point A will be maximum and the potential energy of the bob will be zero at point A. At point B it will have the kinetic energy zero because here velocity will be zero and potential energy will be maximum. So first I will tell you that what is one oscillation. If the mass of the bob move from A to B then it come from B to A then it come from A to C and then it come from C to A this is called as the one oscillation and the time taken in this one oscillation is called as the time period. So here let us assume that the time period of the bow depends upon the three physical quantities and it, it is length, mass of the bow and acceleration due to gravity. Now let us say that length is involved A times and mass is involved B times and acceleration due to gravity is involved C times in the time period formula. Now we can write uh, this uh, relation as A to the T is equal to K L to the power A, M to the power B and G to the power C. Let us say it is equation number 1. Here k is a constant and from the experiments it is found that its value is equal to 2 pi. Now we will write the dimensional formula for uh, both the sides of equation number 1. Then we can write here, here t is time period. So it will have the dimension formula t to the power 1 only. We will also write n to the power 0 here and to the power 0 because these will have the value 1. Then L is length, so it, it will be represented by capital L. M is here mass of the bow, it will be represented by capital M. G is acceleration due to gravity, so it will have the dimension formula Lt to the power minus 2 and it has the C power. So we can write it as M to the power B because here we have written first M, so we will write here M first, then L to the power a power will be here and c power will be here so it will be written as l to the power a plus c then t to the power minus 2c now if we compare the powers of both the sides then we will have that b is equal to 0 then a plus c is also equal to 0 but here if you see the power of the t then it on the right side it is minus 2c on the left side it is 1 so minus 2c is equal to 1. So from here we can have c is equal to minus 1 by 2. Now if we put this value here in a plus c is equal to 0, then we will have a is equal to 1 by 2. And b we have already calculated, it is equal to 0. Now we will put all these values of a, b and c in equation 1, then we can have the time period that that will be k l to the power 1 by 2 m to the power b it is 0 so g to the power minus 1 by 2 we can write it as t is equal to k root l upon g k is a constant and its value is 2 pi so here the time period of the oscillation of the bow or simple pendulum will be t is equal to 2 pi root l upon g. Here l is length of the string and g is acceleration due to gravity and t is time period of the oscillation of the bow. Here you can also see that the mass of the bow is here not involved in the 
time period. Then the third problem is that we have to find a relation uh, for the torque. You know that uh, let us say uh, an object of mass m and a force is acting on this object in a particular direction and let us say we have to calculate the torque of the force about the point O. Let us say its distance from the uh, point about which we have to find the torque of the object is say R then we know that the torque is here depending upon the force and distance so we will write torque is directly proportional to force and distance let us say force is involved a times and distance is involved b times then we will write it as torque is directly proportional to f to the power a r to the power b we can remove the proportionality sign so torque will be equal to k f to the power a r to the power b and let us say it is equation number one here k is a constant now we will write the dimensional formula of the both sides torque has the dimensional formula ml square t to the power minus 2 we know it k is here a constant and it is written as 1 f is force it will have the dimension formula ml t to the power minus 2 because it is involved a times so we will write power here a R is here distance, it will be having the dimension formula capital L and it is involved B times, so we will write here in power of B. So here on left side we can write M1, M to the power 1, L to the power 2, T to the power minus 2 is equal to M to the power A, here L to the power A will be here and L to the power B will be here, so it will be L to the power A plus B then t to the power minus twice a now if we compare the powers on both sides of the dimensions then we have that a is equal to 1 and b is also equal to 1 so torque will be equal to k f to the power 1 r to the power 1 or we can say that torque will be equal to r cos f or it is equal to distance into force Thank you.